Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are standing out in the soybeans with the agronomist of the year, Andrew <laughs> Tucker. So, Andrew, what are we doing today? So, we, I came here to do some spraying today. Uh, we want to demo the T40 drone. Uh, that's the new drone on the market this year and uh, do a little bit of fungicide application. But uh, I came out here about a week ago and started seeing the soybeans and seeing the white mold in them. I want to talk a little bit about some of the chemicals that we use, yeah. why we use them, and uh, show you what white mold looks like in beans. So this hasn't gotten terrible. Um, hopefully it doesn't spread much more uh, than what we see here. But white mold is a disease that comes into the soybeans and attacks the flowers. And um, it can kill some of the plants. It can be pretty catastro catastrophic if we don't use the right measures to keep it under control and to keep the plants healthy. But uh, right here, I mean, if you look over this way, you'll see the beans get a little shorter in there. That's where I started seeing an issue. There's some dead leaves in the beans, uh, like what you see right here on this plant. And right there, so that's the symptomology usually we start looking for. And then when we look at toward the bottom of the plants, you can see the mold developing right here. So oh, yeah. right where that flower is, is where that white mold probably originated. Um, you're going to have spores on the ground that blow up and they just attack the plants and then uh, the plants are susceptible host for the disease to grow and nobody wants moldy soybeans. So in fact uh, what you end up having is you get a lot of black uh, fungus when you go to combine. I've seen combine just covered in black spores uh, when the white mold gets pretty bad. So these beans are nice and tall. You can see they're up over my waist. We don't shoot for tall beans, but when you have a lot of fertility, that tends to happen. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of fertility here, but they're potting very nicely. See clusters of more than four pods at each of these nodes. And occasionally out here, you will see a four bean pod. I'm not seeing as much four bean pods as I've had in previous years. Uh, plants were under a lot of stress early on due to uh, the limited rainfall that we had. Okay. But this is something uh, that we can treat with a fungicide. And so you'll see a lot of fungicide applications going on this time of year. Uh, that's what you see the airplanes doing. We get a lot of people that talk about these chemicals and oh, we're spraying chemicals and chemicals are bad. Uh, but, uh, and obviously we're spraying stuff that's gonna be food or soybeans are used for a lot of other products as well. Uh, but the products that we are spraying, uh, first of all, everything is EPA approved. So they go through a lot of testing, a lot of regulatory action to make sure they're going to be safe. We don't want any bad chemicals going into the, the food chain. Uh, but a lot of chemicals are, are fine. A lot of chemicals are actually naturally found products in the plants. We've talked a lot about radiate and we use a lot of radiate on the farm. Uh, radiate are naturally occurring, occurring hormones in the plants. Uh, we're just boosting it and uh, allowing the plant to stay a little healthier. Uh, we're encouraging growth during vital periods of time, root growth, uh, root hair, so the plant can take up nutrients. So a lot of the products we're spraying are just naturally found in plants anyway. Stuff like uh, fungicides are just gonna keep that, that food better quality and keep the plants healthy so that they can finish out. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how many chemicals we just use every day in the house. You know, mm -hmm. look at toothpaste. Toothpaste has anywhere from three to five chemicals that are not naturally occurring in plants. You know, we're putting them into our mouth. Um, the, a lot, most of the chemicals we're using on our spraying are, um, I would say, you know. A lot of the ones I've seen are naturally occurring. Yeah, yeah, so. they're naturally occurring and, um, and we're using them strategically at the right time, at the right place, so we don't get a lot of extra stuff in the environment that we don't need. Um, in fact, even uh, insecticides, I've been very cautious about the use of insecticides. We're only putting them on if we need it. Um, you see we have some Jap beetles on the plants. Uh, right here we've got a pair of Japanese beetles. Uh, you can see a little bit of feeding here, uh, but not to the point where it justifies using an insecticide. So uh, no insecticide going in today, uh, just a fungicide and uh, the radiate, of course, I put that in just about every pass. And we're also putting in a little bit of fertilizer. Uh, so it's a complete fertilizer program. Uh, reacts complete is what it's called. It's carbon based. So it's got carbon, it's got sugar in it, uh, and it's got some of the essential micronutrients to help these plants finish out. Okay. Let's take a look at the corn quick before we go spray. In corn this time of year, we're definitely keeping an eye out for tar spot. Uh, that's been a really debilitating disease that's coming in, taking a lot of yield from us. 
Uh, we also want to look for gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight. All those are diseases that can rob some yield. And as we look at the leaves, um, we do see um, some disease, as you can see here. Uh, we've got some, uh, usually gray leaf spot comes from the lower leaves and works its way to the top of the plant. Northern corn leaf blight is more elongated lesions of disease uh, that start at the top of the plant and work their way out. Uh, gray leaf spots also uh, uh, um, get some silvery color to it. Gosses, uh, occasionally we'll see that. Uh, that'll, that's usually farther south uh, than where we're at right now. But um, definitely have some disease out here. Uh, it's worth spraying. We've had favorable conditions uh, for disease to develop the past week. We've had dew points around 70. Uh, you got some rootworm beetles here too. Like I said, we're not going to use any insecticide today. Most of this crop is going to get rotated. Uh, but right down here on that leaf, there's your classic. Yep. And then you just flew around. Yeah, we've got one right there too. Coming up. And then he dropped down to the ground. So they're not they're not terrible. Um, the roots, we've been digging uh, roots up here every couple of weeks just to make sure we haven't had excessive feeding. Been good. Uh, we go through the ears. We want to look at kernels around and kernels long. So you know, yield is determined uh, three different ways. Kernels around, kernels long, and then grain fill, the kernel weight at the end of the season. We got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 around. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 30. So about 36, 18 by 36, that's a really nice year. Uh, this is the new decal 105.33. So uh, some of these strips on this farm changed this year. So we put all Smart Stacks Pro genetics down here to help us with the rootworm pressure. And it, it looks like it really has. We've had a lot of late developing. There's uh, two, uh, there's another beetle, beetle there. So a couple on that plant, but. Yeah, you look at them and they just disappear. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're at the top of the leaf there. So those are one of the reasons that we would spray insecticide if they're bad. And if this was going to be corn next year, um, those, uh, see how they're fat at the bellies? They're full of eggs. And so okay. these rootworms are going to want to drop those eggs at the base of the plant so that larvae have something to feed on next year. So we want to prevent that from happening. By killing those beetles now, if this is going to be a corn on corn situation, it's going to protect these roots. Um, you know, we've had some derecho events across this farm the past few years. And if we have any root feeding whatsoever, this corn can go flat. And so we want to try to minimize that from happening. Uh, the traits in the genetics help tremendously with that, but the bugs still have to feed on the corn in order to uh, get those traits to work to kill them. So uh, that's why doing a, a two-stage approach, the insecticide to kill the, the beetles so they don't lay the larvae, and then the traits to protect the plant once it's growing is a really good practice. Okay. But scouting to know what you have and what you need and what you don't need is is really key. You mm -hmm. know, some guys will just say, oh, I'll do it all. Well, we want to try to conserve money, you know, spend the money where it's needed the most uh, without just doing a blanket approach to everything. Some places we need uh, certain products and some places we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got that corner field all outlined. And we're just going to click on it. We're going to click use. We got our pattern, our speed, our spacing, our rate set up. We'll go with two gallon per acre here. Battery's ready to go. Tank level is full tank. So, ready to take off. All right.
How many acres are we hitting on a fill? Five acres to a fill. Nice. Down to the acre. It did start to rain on the last pass or two that we were experimenting with over the beans, but uh, Andrew went out and pulled one one thousandth of an acre and came out with 34 ears. And uh, here's that picture of that corn. That is from the area that we sprayed in this video. So what do you guys think the corn in that strip is going to yield this fall? Go ahead and put your guess down in the comments section for a chance to win a How Farms Work or a Kister Farms t-shirt if I have one of these in stock. I have a few leftovers and I'll be giving a couple away um, if they're of the right size. If not, it'll be a regular How Farms Work shirt, but uh, I'll be giving one away in this video anyway. So go ahead and leave your guess to what you think the yield will be this fall. I'll be sure to follow up when we harvest it. So with that, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. All how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking to?